John 5, 2 through 15. Now in Jerusalem by the sheep gate there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethzapha, which has five portals. In these lay many ill, blind, lame, and paralyzed people. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The ill man answered him, Sir, I have no one to take me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is a Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. John 9, 1-10 As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born again. <coughs> Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming. No one who, no, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, and made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed, and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am he. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray again. Gracious God, thank you for opening our eyes, helping us to see, helping us to hear you, helping us to understand. We ask you to bless whatever we hear today and let us hear what you would have us do. Help us to understand your will for us and your way for us and bring healing where it is needed. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, topic today is healing. And healing is a mystery. It, it is still a mystery. It remains a, a mystery. Even with our modern medical science, we don't fully understand the human body and the brain and the systems and how it all works together and how sometimes it doesn't all work together. Uh, different bodies will respond to the exact same, same treatment in totally different ways. Uh, there is mystery in this. Um, and beyond the purely physical, there are influences that help in our healing or uh, take away from our healing. Influences of the mind or the spirit that affect our health and our wholeness. Uh, a person's social system, a support system, and relationships will help and make a difference in the healing process. Uh, that's why in the Bible, sometimes uh, when there's a healing, uh, Sometimes the Bible talks about sin or a person's connection to God and others, and that connection is part of the healing. In many cultures, we recognize that the influence of other factors beyond just the physical in becoming whole and healed. 
But sometimes we get it very wrong, like the second scripture passage where they all come in and say, hey, uh, whose sin caused this man to be blind? Is it his parents or, his, uh, or himself? And Jesus says, neither one. It was not sin. Uh, it is not sin or fault that causes illness. We don't fully understand the connections of the body and the mind and the spirit. We are beginning to talk about uh, wholeness, holistic care and treatment in the world. We look at the whole person, everything that influences my health or yours, and everything that is important to me or you or those who are in need of healing. All of those things are important if we try to see how all the components can fit together to bring healing. Um, for many of us, we have seen, I have seen, the power of prayer. Uh, I have seen totally unexplainable things happen when we pray to influence unexplainable changes, to bring about miracles of healing. Uh, in, in many ways, we, we don't understand, and healing is still a great mystery in our lives. In today's scripture, we heard two separate accounts of miraculous healing offered by Jesus, and there are many, many other accounts as well. Uh, in one of the cases, one man could walk, and in the other case, another man was born blind. In both miracles, Jesus not only healed the man's body, their illness or whatever was keeping them from being whole, Jesus also restored, in both cases, restored each man's place in the community, reconnected the separated relationships that were around his life. In both miracles, uh, Jesus restored each man's place in the community. Uh, in, in fact, Jesus really put more emphasis on that, on the healing of the soul and setting things right in relationships, than on the physical healing. I'm having weird things happen today. Just things like fly around. Uh, so Jesus put more emphasis on that healing part, that is connections part, than even on the physical things. In fact, Jesus, uh, it wasn't just about walking for one man or seeing for the other man. In, in both cases, the miracle that Jesus offered was a whole new life in both cases. A life connected to God, a life connected to other people. And that fleshes out the rest of the story. In, in the first story, the man who had been begging had been at this gate where healings had happened, miracles had happened. He'd been at this gate for 38 years, a lifetime. And Jesus started the conversation, if you notice, by asking, do you want to be made well? At first glance, that seems an odd question. Of course he would want to be made well, wouldn't he? He'd been, he'd been waiting there by that pool where miracles happen, where healings happen. He'd been waiting there for decades. Of course he would want to be made well because, because he was not able to walk. He couldn't work. He couldn't enter the temple. He was considered unclean, so he's not welcome in the temple. He couldn't live with a family unless they were also willing to be unclean and unwelcome in the temple. By his own admission, this man said he didn't have anyone to help him to try to get to reach the pool in time to be healed. He didn't have anyone. He was alone. He was broken. He was outcast. Of course he must want to be healed. But notice, in the exchange, the man doesn't actually answer the question, do you want to be healed? He doesn't say yes. Yes, I want to be well. He doesn't say that. Instead, he starts saying and explaining why he's been there so long, and, and why he can't be healed, and, and he says whenever he tries to be healed, someone else steps down in his way, someone else gets ahead of me, someone else is first to be healed, someone else blocks him, someone else receives the healing, someone else. What he doesn't say is maybe he has given up on trying to get there 38 years. Maybe he has found another way to live, uh, some other kind of life for himself. We know that he has found a way to eat and live by 
by begging, by getting what he needs. Maybe he's comfortable in that life. Maybe, maybe he doesn't want to change. Maybe he doesn't want to be healed or hadn't thought about it recently. Maybe he doesn't want to take the risk of the change that must happen if he's going to be healed. After all, if, if he were healed, he could walk. He would have to get a job. He would have to live in another place. He couldn't live where he was anymore. He would, he would have to meet new people. He would have to make those connections. He would have to do things differently. Maybe Jesus' question in the first place is not such a crazy question. And his exact right question, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? Maybe that is the exact question that we are being asked through this scripture. And if we do want to be whole, if we do want to be well, what must change? And are we willing to make do the work to make that change? Are we ready to make the changes that need to be made for us to be whole and well? Perhaps Jesus saw something in this man that, excuse me, that answered. Maybe Jesus saw some bit of hope some willingness to change, some need, because he did respond. <coughs> Jesus immediately heals the man. He says, stand up, take your mat, and walk. So Jesus saw something that wanted healing. Immediately, after 38 years of waiting, the man began his new life. He stood up. He started walking. And the first thing that happened to him was that he got in trouble with the temple leaders. Immediately, because he was carrying his mat on a Sunday, on the Sabbath, I should say. Suddenly, a whole new set of rules applied to this man. He was no longer the outcast, the lame man by the pool that nobody counted. The healed man, this new man, had to figure out how to live in society and how to get along in this new order and how to do what other people wanted him to do. He didn't. He didn't get off to a good start. Uh, what's interesting in this story is that sometimes, and, and sometimes overlooked in this story, is the end of the story. Jesus circled back around. He didn't just heal the man and be done. Jesus circled back around and found him again in the temple. In the temple this time. And Jesus, the healer, the great physician, had a follow-up visit with the patient there in the temple. Uh, the temple leaders hadn't offered to help the man. They just yelled at him. They hadn't offered to teach the man. They just criticized him. They, it seems that no one was there to help him figure out how to live this new life. So Jesus came back around. Jesus knew that the physical healing was not the end of the story. Jesus knew that this man had to find a whole new life. And a balanced life, and that it would be hard, and he would need help. So Jesus came back. Perhaps, perhaps Jesus had seen or heard about the encounter, the, the exchange with the temple leaders, the getting into trouble, and, and Jesus knew that a person didn't fare well if you got in trouble with the temple leaders, if you got targeted by the temple leaders, the political people of that day. Jesus knew that that was not a good place to be. So for the first time, in his life, this man had to figure out how to live. He was not an outsider anymore for the first time in his life. Jesus wanted to help him figure it out. His new life, whatever that would be. His healed life, whatever that would be. Jesus wanted to help him learn how to live inside society. So Jesus finds the man and says, See, you've been made well. A little obvious, but to the point, you have been made well. I don't think Jesus was talking about the lameness, the walking bit. I think Jesus was giving advice about how to move forward, how to be accepted by the temple leaders. You've been made well. You can make this relationship, this connection work. If Jesus was trying to teach him how to fit into society, how to how to have good relationship with other people and, and do well. Jesus not only wanted to heal the man's body, Jesus wanted to 
heal this man's relationships. And the last line of the story is a clue. It says, the man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Now, I think that's what Jesus wanted him to do. I think that's what Jesus told him to do. Go tell the temple leaders who, I, who healed you. Because that would take the heat off of the man. Put the focus on Jesus. And would not let them be mad at him anymore. Jesus wanted the man to be connected to others. Connected to the temple. Welcome in the temple. Connected to God. Jesus wanted the man to be whole. And he was. The second scripture passage uh, for today goes, goes into a little bit more detail about the man and uh, the man who was born blind and what happened after the healing. Uh, not only does Jesus heal the man's blindness, all of the blind man's relationships were healed and changed after that point because of that healing from Jesus. Uh, the man takes on a whole new life in the community, a whole new role in the community, and he grows in confidence throughout the interaction, throughout the passage. Now, we didn't read the whole story. The whole story is 40 verses. Keep reading the entire chapter of chapter 9. I didn't read that, and we didn't read that today, but you can read it some other time. The gospel shows how this man begins to build a whole new life, because first there is the encounter with Jesus and the physical healing. And then the life expands from there. First with his neighbors, then with the temple leaders, then with his parents, then with the faith community, and it broadens out and out how this man's life becomes more whole. Toward the end of the chapter, which we didn't read, toward the end of the chapter, the man who had been a nobody, who had been an outcast, who was not even welcome in the temple, by the end of the story, this man has become a powerful witness for Jesus. He is confident in his faith, in his life. He argues in the temple. Not everybody did that. But this confident new man argued in the temple and gave glory to God. The, mind, the man who was born blind, the man who was blind, now sees clearly, even when other people don't see don't understand. He has found his place as one who is healed and made whole by Jesus. He gives glory to God. And his simple statement, which is later in the chapter, I was blind but now I see, has become a very inspired phrase for multiple generations. In fact, inspired amazing grace, I was blind but now I see. It has become a foundational understanding of God's amazing grace. I was blind, but now by God's grace, I see. The miracle of healing is not just about making a body well. The healing that Jesus offers is healing for the whole person, making everything right, all the connections. It starts with the relationship with God in Jesus Christ, and it grows out from there. If that connection with Jesus is healthy, wholeness follows, no matter what our brokenness or our woundedness might be. It starts with Jesus, and wholeness comes. Earlier today, we had our congregational meeting, and uh, in many ways, that was just a business meeting and uh, just a formality of reporting about, about life in a community and um, making sure I'm here for another year. Thank you very much. Uh, but in other ways, the annual meeting is a miracle of healing and wholeness, a witness to God's grace. It's a reminder that we are one body in Christ, that we all belong together. Only in our connection, only in our support of one another and our support as a community are we able to be healthy and whole. Only together are we able to be all that Jesus calls us to be. We need one another. We need each other. We need for each one of us to be healthy and whole and to contribute our gifts and to share our blessings and our lives. We must support one another. We must build up the church together and be God's people together. Jesus knew that and knew that community is essential to health and wholeness. 
God's grace holds us together. God's grace calls us to care for one another, to be together, to support one another. We are more blessed by being together, by loving one another. <coughs> Jesus shows us who God is and how God loves. And when we see that, when we see who God is and how God loves, when we see that and receive that gift of God's love, then our lives are made both whole and holy by the grace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
Gracious God, we pray for specific needs, but we also pray for those things we may not know about. We pray for all who are sick, all who are hospitalized or homebound. We pray for all who are not able to be with us today. We pray for those who are struggling in, in ways that we may not know. We pray for those who are experiencing loss or grief. We pray for those who any who are in need of tenderness and compassion. And we give thanks for those who are helpers everywhere. We pray for medical workers and first responders, military, law enforcement. We pray for those who try to help 
in so many areas. We ask you to bless them and give them the strength and the courage they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You know all of our needs. You know what is good and what needs help. <laughs> you touch our hearts and you move us to respond. We pray. Encourage us to find your path and to shine your light in the world, to share your love, and to be the people that you have called, called us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray as we now pray, saying, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom would come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We welcome you to stand up, praise God, to go out and show our sign.
And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and then. Amen.